What's up everybody, it's George Gabriel and this is part seven of the Autolog, creating an expanding template. In part six, we went over some customization with color coding and bringing in some custom icons into Logic to make it look exactly how you want it to look so you can navigate around it and understand what's what. Now in part seven, the final part of this series, we're gonna look at some IO assignments. We're gonna go back into the environment and maybe change some things around, maybe add some additional things. And we're gonna add some plugins in our auto load so they're ready to go when we get into it and we wanna create. Let's take a look. Okay, now back in the auto load, we have everything kind of set up the way that we want to. The first thing we're gonna do when we get in here is change our IO labels. So when we're looking at our buses and we're looking at our effects, we are actually getting custom names so we can easily see where things are going. So go to the mix menu and go to IO labels and you'll see this menu come up here. And so what I wanna do is I wanna look at my first eight buses and decide what they're going to be. And I'm also gonna change that bus nine to my effects return bus. And how do we do that? You can see this third column here is user. So all you need to do is go to bus one and then at some point you're gonna to have to decide what do I want my eight buses to be labeled. So I'm gonna just say the first one's gonna be drums. And so I click that little radio button and I'll type in drums. The second one is going to be percussion percussion. The third one's going to be bass and you can decide whatever you want them to be. The fourth one is going to be guitar. The fifth one will be keys one. The sixth one we will label keys two. The seventh one will be vocals and the eighth one will be background vocals, which I'm going to abbreviate to BGVs. Now you have to realize that percussion is going to be too long. So I'm going to change percussion to perk. Okay, let's go to our bus nine and that is going to be our effects return. So as before, it'll be FX RTN. And then I've got my effects sends, which are, if you recall, 20, 21, 22, and 23. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to label this effects one, effects two, effects three, and effects four. Okay, so I have my buses all labeled now, and I'm going to close out of this. When we go to screen set two, what we'll see is that it still has the same names we named them before. But what's really important is when we're going into our outputs on the track level. Now you'll notice that everything is going to drums. Why is that? Because we changed the name in the IO label to drums for bus one. Remember everything we decided was going to bus one. And when you click on the output and you go to the bus, now you can see the names that we just added are in here. And you can also see the effects names are in here as well. And that's particularly useful when you want to dial up effects and you go to the sends area and you go, hey, where do I want to send it? I want to send it to effects one, two, three, and four. And in turn, those will end up right here, effects one, two, three, and four. Now to rename these on the level down here, all we need to do is double click on the name and we could just say drums and go on to perk, then bass, guitar, keys one, keys two, vocals, and BGVs. We had already labeled our auxes, so we don't need to really do any more labeling here. But really this is for when you're under the hood and you're looking at your outputs and you can see them on this bus menu. And that will be helpful when you want to go, am I going to effects three or what? Because you're like bus 22, but I don't remember what's what. Which brings me to my next thing is we're going to populate our effects. Now, when we created these effects, we actually created them, but we didn't make them stereo. Now I'm going to change that by clicking these little circles and making them double circles. That's going to make them all stereo. And really at this point, we can populate our session to have what we want on it. So typically what I will do is do some bigger reverb on effects one. So I'll just go to the reverb and we'll use the space designer since that's a convolution reverb. So typically I'll go to large spaces or medium spaces and I'll find some sort of plate reverb or whatever. Let's just use a stage plate on this for now. And we can always change that. It's really depending on what your taste is. For me, I like my effects two to be the stereo delay. So I'll go to my delay and I'll go ahead and do the stereo delay. Stereo delays are very useful and I actually keep it to the quarter note and eighth note. If I want to change it, I just change it when I get into my session. And then usually I'll do a couple of short reverbs here, like for percussion or guitar, that kind of thing. So I tend to like the space designer since it is a convolution reverb. And so I'll find some medium spaces, maybe a room. Uh, let's say, let's just go for medium suite on this one. And I really don't know what these sound like. And let's do a little bit smaller one on four. 
but you're the person who is going to figure out what it is that exactly that you want on these. I'm gonna go for a small room uh, multivocals. At this point, I'm going to save this just because I want to have this saved. One more thing about the I.O. It changes it for everything in Logic. So whether you have your auto load or you just go to file new, it's always going to have those labels. So when you're changing the I.O. labels, you're changing it in the entirety of Logic. So no matter what you're in, your I.O. label is going to be that. Okay, sometimes I like to have a drummer ready to go. And so what I'm going to do on track eight is I'm going to go to my software instruments and I'm just going to go ahead and do the drum kit designer and I'm just gonna load up this drum kit and it's ready to go for me and you can see the icon changed to drums and I'm gonna actually change instrument 8 to drums and I'm gonna make sure the bus already goes to drums which it does because everything at this point is going to drums and now I've got some plugs that are ready to go now what's cool about this is if I save this and I close out of it let's just go close project and I come back into it You'll notice that the plugins are in sleep mode, which means that they're not using any CPU power until we actually send something to them, which is nice. But the biggest issue I have right now is, you know, when I'm looking at my tracks and it's like everything is going to the drum bus, I don't want it all to go to the drum bus. And typically when I'm writing something, I'm either starting on drums or keyboard. And aside from the drums that we just dialed up, what I like to do with the rest of my buses for synths are put them to keys one. I can always reroute them later, but in order to do that, I need to go to the environment. Another thing I like to do is I like to keep track one open in case I want to dump down a track that I want to listen to. I also tend to make track one a stereo track. So if I want to make that stereo, all we have to do is hit this little one circle where it says mono and we will change it to stereo. And I could just call this, you know, stereo track. For me, I always like to do my bass on track eight. So I'm not gonna label this bass, but what I am gonna do is I'm gonna change my bus to the bass bus so it's ready to go. Likewise, I'm going to look at tracks five, six, and seven, and I'm going to change them to my guitar bus. So I'm just going to change that to guitars. And that way I can have like a left rhythm, a right rhythm, and a solo guitar. And I'll leave these open. Maybe I want to have percussion on them. Maybe I'm doing acoustic guitars. I don't know. But at this point, I'm just going to get some things to make my workload a little bit faster. And that way I'm outputting this the way that I want to output it. Now, in order to assign the rest of the outputs where I want them, I'm going to go back into the environment by doing command zero and right now I'm on my audio layer so we just reassign these first eight but I'm going to take the rest of them and I'm not going to have them go to drums because a lot of times what I'm doing is I'm doing a lot of vocals so I'm going to have them already going to vocals again I can always change this later but what it is is track nine is typically a vocal track for me and if you really want to get crazy you can say in my mind tracks nine through 20 are always going to be vocals and 20 through 29 are always going to be background vocals. You can set that up and in fact instead of uh, just going to that uh, F6 command to get the next track up you can always do your F6 command and reassign the track to whatever one you want. You know like hey I always know my background vocals start on 20 and that way it's already routed to your background vocals. In fact when we look back at our auto load you can already have your background vocals routed to the effects that you want to in the in the manner that you want to and it just dials up it's all ready to go really nice kind of feature. The next thing we're gonna do is change those instruments that we we're talking about. Again, I like, other than the drums, I like everything else to be assigned to keys. So I'm just select all of these with the exception of the drums. And I'm just gonna change this to bus five, which is my keys one bus. Now, hopefully your wheels are turning in your head like, wow, I can really have everything kind of set up exactly the way I want. I can even, I mean, you can even go as crazy as putting a bunch of plugins in the background and just down like, I need my contact or I need my whatever it is and you're just bringing in those instruments. I don't necessarily recommend doing that but you can if you want to. Again this is all meant to be a guide to get you where you want to go. Now one of you asked what if I have some external MIDI that I just want to have in my auto load? How do I set that up? It's fairly simple how we do that. Let's go back to the environment to assign those MIDI. There's two types of instruments. Maybe you have a keyboard that can take up to 16 channels of MIDI or maybe you have kind of an old keyboard that only can take one piece of MIDI at a time. Either way you can go to new MIDI instruments instrument for a single channel MIDI instrument or multi instrument for a multiple MIDI channel instrument. I'll show you both. This is what a MIDI instrument looks like and this is what a multi instrument looks like. And what you can do is you can just set these up with your MIDI imports, your MIDI channel in, your out ports, what MIDI channel you're going to. You can certainly name this instrument like this is my Nord. 
or actually if it's a single, let's call it a Juno. And for this, this is my Nord. Basically, you can set these up behind the scenes to do what it, you want to do. And now you can communicate with your MIDI instruments. And it's really just that simple. So now if you want to dial those up, if I go to my F6, what should come up next is instrument nine. And what we could do is reassign this track to my Nord or my Juno. And you can see it says what channel's there, which is cool. Now, how do I get the output from my Juno into Logic? Well, this is where I would change one of your side chains to actually be an input to your instrument. And that's where you would actually go ahead and change this to a stereo input and figure out, of course, with a four channel audio interface, it's not gonna really work the same way. But if you have a multi-channel audio interface, then you can dial in the inputs here and listen to them that way. Uh, just for the sake of argument, let's say it's one and two. But now you can just see my voice. But whatever is being fed in there will just go to that area. Of course, you can always set up your audio to have it ready to go for any of your MIDI instruments. So really, again, this is just a guide. You know what your setup is. You know what your instruments are. You know how you're going to use things. And that is how we're going to do things. I don't have any MIDI instruments that I want to put in here. So I'm going to go ahead and take this input out. And you might ask yourself, well, uh, we made these stereo. Should we make the side chain stereo? It really depends on what you're feeding it. If you're feeding it a mono thing, then no, don't make them. If you're feeding them a stereo thing, then make them stereo. For my purposes, I'll probably make it stereo because if I'm going to feed something to it, it'll probably be a stereo thing. So one last thing you might ask, well, how are we going to use this? How do these effects get used? How does that all happen? If I go to instrument one, I don't really need to have an instrument there to show you how this is routed. If I want to give this reverb or delay, I'm just going to go to my send and I'm going to go to, let's say, effects one and watch effects one now. It comes alive. And now I'm going to feed it just like I would an auxiliary knob on a mixing board, a portion of this signal. And whatever is playing through here, this portion of the signal will go to our reverb and then it'll be reverberated. Now you will notice because this is a bus, it should be 100% wet. The dry should be muted. So this is a 100% wet effect. That's the desired effect that we want to have, which means the only thing that is actually going to get dumped down to our effects return is that 100% wet effect. But that is how we dial our reverbs into a track. And then the more you dial, the wetter it is. The less you dial, the less wet it is. It gives you a real good adjustment. It's much easier than manipulating the actual reverb itself and going, well, oh, do I want any wet signal? Plus it rules out any chance of phasing. Now, because I don't want my effects on here right now, I'm just gonna go back, make sure my screen is unlocked and locked now that I have it the way that I want to. And honestly, for me, I start my session on screen two. I actually like to go right in there and see where things are routed right from the get-go. Very rarely do I actually use one. Most of the time I'm using two. I even score in two. You might seem preposterous, but sometimes I have a little picture right here. Now, maybe you're like, I need to see it on a TV, whatever. That's fine. It's your workflow. Whatever works for you works. I'm not trying to tell you what to do. I'm trying to give you options and understand how you can set this up to be brilliant. I mean, look at this. I can go in here and create. It looks snazzy. It's inspiring to look at. It's not this like, oh, logic. Oh, new tracks. Oh, what do I want? Oh, come on. This is awesome. Okay, there's one thing we need to correct in this auto load, and that's with the multi timbral instruments. The fact is I haven't set up an auto load in years since I've been using the same one for a long time and Logic changed the way you do multi timbral instruments. And now it's a little bit more simple than the way I had you set it up. So we're going to go back in the environment and change that so it works correctly. And I'll show you how those multi timbral instruments work. So let's take a look. Okay, back in the environment, we'll see these multi timbral instruments that we have. What we're going to do is we're actually going to get rid of all of the additional multi timbral instruments that I gave you. So just choose two through eight in all of these and delete them. They're not the way we're going to be doing them. And so then you're just left with these four multi-timbral instruments. And so I'm going to group these all together. And then what you need to do is actually select them all. And what we want to do is instead of them having MIDI channel to one, we want to have that change to all. And instead of having MIDI out channel to all, we want to change that to one. Let's just verify that that does that with all of these. And that should solve our problem. Now, while I'm here, since the first two are going to be contact and the second two are going to be omnisphere, I'm just going to actually change these names to K1 and K2. So if I just needed to do the multiple selection K1, that should turn the first to K1 and K2. That's for contact. And for this, I'm going to do OS1 for omnisphere, OS1 and 2. Okay, so that's that with that. And now when we close out of this, you will see that there are MIDI channels on these. So how do I get to the next MIDI channel? All you need to do is your F 
F6, and you'll see that's MIDI channel two. So we'll just dial up our contact instrument, and let's just say I don't have much in here. Let's just say I'm gonna use this analog dreams thing here. I wanna make sure that if I click the eye, I can see there's MIDI channel one. I'll dial another library up in here. Let's say I'll do Ethereal Earth, and I'll hit that little info button, and you can see that's MIDI channel two. So now this would be the analog dreams, and this would be the Ethereal Earth. And if I want to actually change the name, I could just double click and change that right there. But right now we know MIDI channel one, MIDI channel two, just using our F6, that's how we're dialing up our multi timbre. Now you can actually do this as a multi and change the outputs as well. Uh, if you go into your instrument, you can see I can go to contact and I can have a multi output. But for the purposes of this video, I'm just gonna show you how you get your multi timbre instruments working. Once we do this, this is now set up correctly and I'm gonna just delete this out. And I just wanna show you what it does in the environment real fast. See, it actually brought that second instrument in here. So it's pretty cool. So if you do another one, it'll bring a third instrument. So you only really need the one to go off of, which is MIDI channel one, and then it'll populate as needed. But that's how we use these multi-timbral instruments. So to wrap up, I, I hope I give you a lot of options of things to think about on how you can create your own custom auto load. Really, this exercise is how I do it, but really it's meant to educate you in a way that you might not be aware of so you can do your own thing. Hopefully it's opened up your mind like, wow, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna have a screen set for, it's gonna have, I'm gonna have a scoring screen set, I'm gonna have a mastering screen set. That's the idea. Like hopefully this was inspiring and it gets you excited about like, wow, I could really harness the power of logic. If you like this series, give it a thumbs up. Make sure you tell your friends about George Gabriel Music have them subscribe and click the bell icon if you want to see more videos i got a lot more coming and please leave your comments and if you're running into any issues with any of this stuff you can always reach out to me as you can plainly see through the comment section i have been answering everybody's questions as to the best of my ability i'll see you again with another exciting series on george gabriel music